So we're now going to look at setting up some form of authentication on the MQTT broker where only three approved clients with certain usernames and passwords will be able to access the services of the broker. This will be considered the first level of authentication which will probably be used when it comes to your MQTT broker. There is higher levels of authentication such as using certifications, uh, security certs and so on. But the first level would be pre-approved usernames with a password to access the broker and could be useful on a level two factory area where you've got a fairly secure network because you just don't want someone who can plug into a LAN or whatever it might be and be able to access your broker services. So you're looking for something that's pre-approved. Um, Mosquito comes packaged with a tool that will allow you to set up a password for specific usernames. The tool here is the Mosquito password dot exe and it's fairly straightforward to use so you basically type in the command the, of the application you use the minus c you give the password file a name mtu password file in this case and then you can give it a username and then you'll be asked to put in the password for that user so each client that you connect to whether publish or subscribe you can give them a username to access the broker that username matches the username that's in the file and the password that matches in the file, they get access to the services of the broker. So we press enter on this. And you're asked for a password. So the password I'm going to use is fairly simple. It's going to be T-E-S-T -E and T-E-S-T -E just for the purpose of the demo. We'd obviously use something much more complicated in doing this in reality. So that's the password file created. It gets created encrypted. So if you open up the file and have a look at it, you will see you can make out what the user is, but the password for that user is encrypted. Only Mosquito will know what that is. Now, if you go back into your configuration file to set it up, you will allow an anonymous collection false. So every client who tries to connect to the broker will have to identify itself with a username and you specify where these usernames are and passwords are using the password file keyword here. In this case, I have it in my Mosquito directory in this file. If I go back into the broker and run the broker, it's now connected. If I take a client, let's say a publisher in this case, and I try and ask access it without a password, connection is refused. If I try and access it with the incorrect password, connection gets refused. The only way to access the services of the broker is to use the proper password and username. In this case, I got the password wrong. Use the wrong case. There we go. So you can see the connection has been made. And if we set up a subscriber, the exact same process needs to be done. So username, then the user, password, test, access is allowed. And they can both have the same username and the username is more of a classification of usernames as long as they present with the same username and the appropriate password password they will get access to the broker usernames shouldn't be confused with what a client id is every time a client communicates with a broker it communicates a client id that's got to be unique but the username can be a common username across clients uh, or it can be individuals various clients so the client id is always unique but the username can be the same as other clients and that's how you set up one layer of authentication. And again, following good practice for our configuration files, we have our general configuration. All the authentication is here under the general configuration. You can do individual authentication for individual listeners in the broker. But in this case, this is a global configuration we've applied across. You can add other usernames. You can add other passwords uh, into this file um, and make it as complicated or as secure as you need to be.